Jerry Spence, trial lawyer who has never lost a criminal case, said, My opponent did not understand preparation. He had little idea of the weeks, sometimes months, that I spend in lonely isolation preparing my case. What he saw, without knowing it, was a lawyer who had been freed by acquiring a fund of eloquently prepared facts. When we see the greatest performers in any domain, whether it be art, business, engineering, law, medicine, music, sports, or teaching, what we're seeing is the product of preparation. It's easy to watch Serena Williams hit a forehand or marvel at Santiago Calatrava's architectural and engineering creations and think how lucky they are to be so talented. It's also wrong. As former NBA All-Star and sharpshooter Ray Allen said, when people say, God blessed me with a beautiful jump shot, it really pisses me off. I tell those people, don't undermine the work I put in every day. Not some days, every day. Ask anyone who has been on a team with me who shoots the most. The answer is me. Studies conducted by Florida State professor Anders Ericsson on violin players demonstrated the power of preparation. He observed that the general music education students had practiced on the violin an average of 3,240 hours by their 18th birthday. The better violin students had practiced an average of 5,301 hours, and the best violin students had practiced an average of 7,410 hours. He concluded these were clearly major differences in practice time. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos popularized the practice of banning PowerPoint presentations from meetings in favor of six-page memos. He believed that the time required to prepare a cogent description of a new product, service, or other topic of importance is a valuable step in helping the team clarify their thinking. He says, often when a memo isn't great, it's not the writer's inability to recognize the high standard, but instead a wrong expectation on scope. They mistakenly believe a high standard six-page memo can be written in one or two days, or even a few hours, when really it might take a week or more. Consider your current role and responsibilities. Now think about the knowledge and skills that go into performing your role and responsibilities on a daily basis. How much time are you investing in preparing to perform these activities at a high level? Here are a few examples from exceptional performers for comparison's sake. Tom Brady, seven-time Super Bowl champion quarterback, watches 17 hours of football video per week. Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court John Roberts Jr., when preparing for an oral argument, would write down several hundred questions on note cards, shuffle them, and test himself. Boxing champion Manny Pacquiao did 2,000 sit-ups every day. In his autobiography, Open, tennis champion Andre Agassi wrote, my father says that if I hit 2,500 tennis balls each day, I'll hit 17,500 balls each week, and at the end of one year, I'll have hit nearly one million balls. He believes in math. Numbers, he says, don't lie. A child who hits one million balls each year will be unbeatable. Would you describe yourself at work as unbeatable? Your level of performance and results are directly proportional to your level of preparation. Want better results? Increase your preparation. Where does your years of experience factor in? It doesn't. It's common in society to equate experience with excellence. However, studies show that experience alone doesn't mean much. Research on several types of medical doctors revealed that mammographers actually become less accurate in their diagnoses as their experience increases. Neurosurgeons who have been operating for 15 years are typically no more skilled than their peers who have been operating for just a few years unless they've increased their preparation through deliberate practice of the primary skills of the procedures. Here are three principles of preparation to help guide your efforts at dramatically increasing your performance and results. Number one, purpose. It's impossible to properly prepare for something that you don't care about. In my strategic coaching work with executive leaders, we'll analyze their calendar and attempt to tie a purpose to each item. Any items that are not tied to a purpose are then eliminated. As you think about your calendar and the items that consume the most time, ask yourself how much preparation you're investing in each area. The rule of thumb is that the activities and tasks you're investing the most time in each day should also be the ones you're investing the most time preparing for beforehand. Number two, plan. 
Developing a plan for your preparation is often overlooked in the flurry of activity we find ourselves in on a daily basis. All good plans answer two questions. What are you trying to achieve? How will you achieve it? While many leaders have plans for their business, far fewer have plans for their preparation. Number three, prevention. The primary reason we prepare for anything is to increase our probability of success and reduce our chance of failure. But wait, isn't one of today's most popular mantras, fail fast? Why would we want to prevent failure when a lot of people are advocating for it? Because failing fast as a consistent route to success is a myth. Professor Bradley Stotts provides insights on failure in the medical field when he wrote, our analysis of 10 years worth of data across 70 surgeons revealed not only that on average they learned more from others' failure than from their own, but also that an individual's own failure led to worse future performance. Pull back the curtain on the greatest contributors and performers in any field and you'll see thousands of hours of preparation. But peer inside the home offices and video meetings of many business people and you'll see waves and waves of activity with little to no preparation in sight. The best performers have the best preparation. So, decide what knowledge, skills, and activities are key to your success and turbocharge your preparation. As Abraham Lincoln said, if I had eight hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first six sharpening my axe.